With the release of Ryzen, there's been a wave of upgrades across the PC enthusiast community. And this has been especially interesting on the used scene because a whole load of CPUs have just been dropped into the market. And a lot of them are being on the old AM3 Plus platform, which was slated for so long for its lacking performance that the prices are becoming really competitive at the moment. And despite they have those sort of performance issues that everyone complains about, at the right price, they might be still worth having a look at. And that's exactly what we're doing today with this old school AMD gaming PC. Hello everybody, this is Frank and welcome to Jaeger Tech. The idea to do this build actually started when I just needed a graphics card to put in a system so that me and my friends could do some LAN gaming. And the only thing I could find locally, because I needed it like that day, uh, the only thing I could find locally that was a reasonable price was an old HD6950. <laughs> and it's just a beast of a card. It's got like a triple slot cooler on it, four thick heat pipes. It's just, it looks awesome. And I wanted to do like a cool build with it. And that's where the idea for this old school AMD build came from. But anyway, let's get onto the specs. So the CPU is an FX6100. That is the lowest clocked 6000 series CPU on this platform. And that's fine though, because we're gonna be doing some overclocking, obviously. And this chip overclocks just as well as the rest of the 6000 series chip, so it doesn't really matter. The motherboard is an MSI 970A G46. And whereas this isn't the best AM3 Plus motherboard, for, an, for a 6000 series CPU, it's actually pretty damn good. You can get a really decent overclock out of them. And I actually got this for essentially 15 pounds. And that's because I bought it in a bundle with a Phenom 2 X6 1090T and an all-in-one water cooler. And I sold the CPU so that I only paid 30 pounds for this water cooler and the motherboard. So I'm just giving that up as 15 pounds each as a rough estimate of what they would have costed. I actually found some of that made for AMD RAM. And so I actually have four two gigabyte sticks of DDR3. This stuff looks really cool and it cost me 20 pounds for the full eight gigabytes. And I could have got four gigabyte sticks for around the same price, but this stuff looks awesome. It's gonna work fine. And yeah, it's not that much of a pain to upgrade afterwards. The CPU cooler is another interesting one. I essentially got this for free because I bought a system, sold a load of stuff out of it and made a profit as well as kept a few parts. It's from a company called Silentium PC. It's got a 92 millimeter fan on there. It's pretty quiet. Uh, but I did have to make a mounting plate uh, to mount it to this motherboard, which you'll see later in the build. Like I said, the graphics card is an HD6950. It's a two gig model, direct CU2 from ASUS, and it is a monster as you will see in the build, which is kind of funny because nowadays the performance is kind of, kind of sucks but it's, it, it suits well for an FX6100, I think. You're talking sort of GTX 660 levels, I think, somewhere around that mark. So not bad, and for 40 pounds, it's definitely, I'd say it's worth it. For hard drive space, I've picked up locally off somebody for 10 pounds of 500 gigabyte Seagate Pipeline 2. Not the fastest thing in the world, but I think 500 gigs is a decent amount of space to install a few games and have you know, all of, you know, most of your important files if you're an average user, if you're an average gamer. The power supply is a Delta unit. So that's a server power supply, it's 600 watts, and it only costs 13 pounds. You can get some really good deals on those server grade power supplies, which are good quality. Don't be confused because they're just all silver housing. Those things are made to last. And 600 watts for 13 pounds, but, all of these server supplies tend to come with an, an odd quirk or two. And this one has too short of an eight pin EPS connector, just a bit too short, so I had to get an extension for that, and a really short 24 pin uh, ATX connector for the motherboard. So I had to get an extension for that as well. Uh, so I got those extensions off of eBay, which brought the total price up to 16 pounds. Still really good for a 600 watt power supply. And to put all of this in, I picked up the CIT Darkstar off of Amazon this time. And I think it cost 30 pounds, but it's definitely not the best built 
budget case. The build quality is not fantastic. It has quite a lot of those budget case quirks that are kind of annoying. It performs well enough, the cooling's not a problem, and it fit everything in, even if the build process wasn't the smoothest. So it's not too bad. That's enough of that. Let's get on to the cleaning up of some of these parts, making that CPU cooler hold down plate, and finally the build. There's a distance between us It's getting hard to reach out Haven't seen you in seasons But all I hear is your voice I know my limits You can break me down but Stay till the finish line And I've been counting minutes For quite some time now Just to see you again Bitch shit And I've been counting down Let's give this the, uh, the test boot for the clean system. <laughs> CPU and memory changed. Let's hit the BIOS. What the? Uh, come on. Excellent, we had a bit of a scare there. Okay, eight gigs of RAM, 6100.
So there we are, the build is complete, it's overclocked, ready for benchmarking, but before we get onto that, just a couple of things about this build and the whole process. The case was definitely, definitely not the best budget case in the world. Uh, I actually wouldn't recommend this case. There's two like light bars that go down the front, they died after like the first boot, the motherboard standoffs didn't line up, very flimsy. There are plenty of other budget cases that are more worth your money. Go check out my reviews uh, on my channel if you're interested in those. Uh, but back to this build. So the CPU cooler did fantastic. Uh, that hold down plate I made worked excellent. The performance was fantastic. It wasn't, the cooler, the cooling fan didn't even have to ramp up. Uh, even at 4.5 gigahertz, we got out of this processor, which yeah, not bad. Temps were fine. Temps on the motherboard were fine as well. For the graphics card, Obviously, temps were fine with that massive cooler on there, but the, the overclock kind of sucked. So I could only add, I think, 200... No, I could only add about 50 megahertz. <laughs> that, that was optimistic. Yeah, I could only add about 50 megahertz. So out of the box, it comes with 810. I got it to 850. Yeah. I couldn't unlock voltage control. I was debating flashing it to a 6970 BIOS, but it just didn't seem worth it. It's like a 40 pound graphics card, but it still performed pretty decent. We'll see in the benchmarks, which I guess can start now. I benchmarked Cinebench and Firestrike for the synthetics, and I only managed to get three games done. I benchmarked Total War Warhammer, and I benchmarked Grand Theft Auto V, so again, pretty CPU heavy, and then Red Orchestra 2. It's a pretty old game. It came out around the same time as this hardware came out, funnily enough, which is why I wanted to include it. Also, I love the game. Uh, I wanted to see how well it performed in that today. And there we have it, not, not the best gaming PC I've ever put together by a long stretch. And the, the Firestrike and Cinebench scores kind of worried me to start with. 82 single core in Cinebench is pretty poor. 
Uh, but even at 1080p, medium settings mostly across the board, I got decent frame rates, you know? That average frame rate in GTA 5 was very playable, but yeah, for £174, this, this PC wasn't bad. I think I could get better value though if I went with some different parts. And also I know that the benchmarks were a bit out of focus, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, but on that note, this is actually the first video I've shot and edited completely altogether um, for upload. So I know it's asking a lot of the internet, but maybe cut me a bit of slack and definitely put any suggestions and advice you have for me down in the description below. Like the video if you liked it as well. Also check out my channel. By the time this goes up, I'll have a few other videos up there as well. So maybe a couple of other builds, some reviews and tutorials, things like that. So please check out my channel and subscribe if you like what you see. But thank you very much for watching. This has been Frank with Jaeger Tech. See you next time.